Hi, in this video, I'm going to explain the difference between wireless LAN, your Wi-Fi, versus your cellular connection, your 4G or your 5G, maybe even 3G, HSDPA, all of those things will be discussed in this video. So the very first difference is Wi-Fi does not require a SIM card, while cellular requires a SIM card. So having a look at a cell phone screen, what does that mean and what does that mean? So this over here is your cellular connection strength. That is your connection to the company that's providing you with cellular connection, making calls, sending text, and also providing data. Now over here, this is your Wi-Fi link. That is the link to somebody's router within the home or possibly at work, you might have a wireless access point that you are connecting to. So what is the difference between these two types of connections? Before I answer that question, I just wanna show it to you on a different phone. Here you've got the Wi-Fi, and over here you've got your cellular strength. Right, so let's start with the Wi-Fi. This over here is the connection to a router or a local network. So say for example, if you have a look at this, you've got a local router, there you go, usually within 20 meters of your device, so maybe you're using your cell phone, maybe you're using a computer, maybe it's a laptop or a tablet, and you normally had to put in a pin. There was an advertised network name, often you will see those network names. For example, on a phone, you will see different local networks which you can connect to. Often when you tap on it, it asks you for the password. This is the SSID. These are the network names that are available for you to connect to if you have the credentials. On a Windows computer, it looks like this. By the Wi-Fi option, you'll see these are the different networks which you can connect to. These are Wi-Fi LAN networks. They are not cellular networks. So going back to this wireless network, this router over here would have advertised a network name defined by whoever set up the network and you would have connected using your phone, you put in the password and now you are connected. But you are only connected to this one router. Usually this is a very small geographic space. So if you try and go more than 20 meters, you'll find that you're moving out of the network range. You'll see that the bars on your phone reduce. So these bars over here will probably go down. Instead of having three or four bars, you might only have one. And that's the signal strength determined by how far you are from that router. So looking at this in the home, this is a common setup. You've got different computers, maybe a printer, and these are all connecting to the wireless router in the home. But this is a local network, which means that you're just connecting between the client, yourself, and the access point that is very close to your device. Usually you can see the access point. It might be on a table, might be on a shelf, might be on the ceiling. So here's an example. There's an access point mounted on a ceiling. Here's another example, an access point mounted on the side of a wall. Here's another one mounted probably in a warehouse of sorts. There's the access point. So the staff can connect to the local area network by connecting to these access points. Now in larger lands, what happens is there might be access points around the campus. So for example, if you're at a university, you might be able to walk more than 20 meters and still be connected to the Wi-Fi. And the reason being, is there are access points all around the campus. So what happens is as you move away from this access point and you get in the vicinity of say this one, you'll hop over onto that access points network and you will still be connected to the Wi-Fi of the university or the company. It is still a Wi-Fi connection. Right, so having a look at this diagram, you can see a computer one, computer two, they're all connecting via Wi-Fi to this router. But how do you actually get internet connectivity? Well, the router is in some way also connected to the web using a service provider. The first thing is if you're on Wi-Fi, you might be able to connect to the computers and devices within this LAN. So say for example, you want to print to this printer over here. We're not going through the internet, you're just connecting via the same wireless router, which is now just providing you a switch function, meaning it's just relaying your data to this printer over here, and then the printer is going to print for you. But if you want to get onto the internet, you still need internet connectivity, and that's where the confusion comes in. The router needs to have either a cellular connection or a fiber connection, 
or possibly just a copper connection to your internet service provider. So if you have a look at the back of a old router, you'll see that there's your LAN connections. This is for Ethernet. Maybe you're connected using hardwired cables, Ethernet. But in this case, you can see there's actually part of an antenna and there's part of an antenna. So people were also connecting to this router using Wi-Fi. But look at that. What is that? That says WAN connection. So that is the connection to your internet service provider allowing you to have internet connectivity. So we can see that the router is really just providing you the link to another network. So having a look here, so here is your device and here is another device and they're both connecting to this router. So this router allows you to connect to devices within this network. But you can see there's a line drawn here. And the reason for this line is in order for you to exit out of your local area network, your router needs a connection to the internet via a internet service provider. The minute you connect via an internet service provider, you are now moving to the WAN. The WAN means the wide area network, while the LAN means the local area network. And you need a router in order to connect to the wide area network. Now, these routers are often called gateways. Why is it called a gateway? Because it allows you the exit path and the entrance path into and out of a LAN. So you can see here, this is the gate, and that's why we call it the gateway. So a router is often called a gateway. So here you can see the LAN is just local. Everyone is connected locally to a central resource. The minute you want to get outside of the network, we now rely on the internet service provider, and that is usually in the form of fiber or over the air. So here you can see cellular communications. Look at that. In this case, this is a lattice tower. Over here, we've got a 5G tower. So these are providing you a direct connection to your internet service provider. Maybe it's AT&T, maybe it's Vodafone, maybe it's Vodacom, maybe it's MTN, maybe it's Bharti Cell. Whatever the company, this is providing you internet access. So if we go back to the phone, if you are connected via Wi-Fi, you are just connected to somebody's network that has its own connection to the internet. So you are not using your data, your cellular data. You're not going to incur any costs. So that means that you can upload and download and the person who's going to bear the cost is the person who is paying for the link from the LAN to the internet. In this case, it won't be you. If you are only connected via Wi-Fi, you are using someone else's data on their router. The minute you are connected via cellular directly to your own internet service provider, so in this case, if you are connecting only via cellular and your Wi-Fi is turned off, you are going to incur costs and AT&T will add that to your bill. So any internet connectivity you have will be connected directly to a cell phone tower, which means you are now connecting directly to one of these antenna on a post or on a building or on a lattice tower somewhere nearby. These can be even a few kilometers away. So you can see that the range of connectivity is much wider for cellular communications. Now where it gets confusing is these towers are providing mobile users data, but some of these towers are also providing data to homes and offices in the form of bulk data services. So maybe they've got unlimited data services. But the difference is, is that the connection is via a home router or a work router that is usually set up just for the data. So say for example, you see one of these devices, this is the CPE device, and this is actually just a 5G router which is put in the home. But in this case, this router is actually communicating to the cellular network via cell phone towers. So here's a different looking one, but doing the same thing. So if this was in the home, people would be connecting to this device via Wi-Fi, but this device will be connecting to a cell phone tower outside or down the street, and that will be connecting via cellular. 
So we can see that the people who are connecting locally are just on the LAN. If you enter this network and you come and visit one of your friends and you say, can I connect to your Wi-Fi? You will then be given the Wi-Fi password and you'll connect to their router. You will not pay for any of the data usage. The person who owns this 5G device or the router will be paying for the data to the cellular network who is providing the bulk data. Now, it's not only wireless, it could also be fiber. So say, for example, your home has something like this. You've got a fiber connection directly into your router. Right. So what happens in this case is you'll be getting your internet connectivity via a service provider who's connected you via fiber links. So maybe the fiber came in like this and there it goes to your router and your router is still offering Wi-Fi to all these local users who are connecting locally. But your Wi-Fi router is connecting via fiber to the internet. So who's paying for what? Well, as you connect to this Wi-Fi router, you are just using the data which is being paid for by the person who owns or leases this router. So in terms of cost, Wi-Fi is almost always cheaper because it's usually connected to a network which often has a contract to an ISP. ISP stands for Internet Service Provider. That could be cellular, fiber, ADSL, VDSL. And it's usually much cheaper when it's connected directly to the router. So Wi-Fi is usually much lower in cost. And as I said, if you're someone who's just linking to someone's Wi-Fi, maybe you are in an airport and there is a Wi-Fi access point available and you link to it paying for anything unless they're asking you for $5 for half an hour's usage. But generally, when you're connecting to Wi-Fi, say at your work or at your school or your university, you're not paying for that. The university or office who has the contract with the ISP will be paying for the data. But cellular, on the other hand, if it's your cell phone and you are connected via cellular data alone, you will be billed for each megabyte that you use. And that's one of the reasons why it's more expensive. You are connecting directly to a cell phone tower and you will be the person incurring the bills. Right, so to recap, Wi-Fi is local to a router or an access point nearby you, which usually has internet connectivity paid for by somebody else, usually much faster internet. Cellular, on the other hand, this is your connection to your own cellular provider. It's metered and it is billed and it is usually billed at a higher rate. So what does this mean for streaming? If you're somebody who likes to stream YouTube videos and music and so forth, you would most probably want to only do it when you are already connected to the wireless LAN. If you are streaming and you are only using your cell phone provide your cellular network, you will incur much higher data charges. So it's generally better to connect to a wireless LAN in order to do your streaming and bulk downloads because wireless LANs mostly have cheaper contracts to the internet service providers to provide bulk data. Now, what about a Wi-Fi hotspot? What is that? Well, at any point in time, most wireless devices can be set to connect to other devices by putting them as a hotspot. So that means that devices nearby can be connected over the air to a laptop or maybe a mobile phone. So two wireless devices can connect to each other. But remember that the protocol is still Wi-Fi. All it means is they are connecting to each other within a small domain just like that. Now, if the hotspot has connection to the internet, then and only then will you be able to get internet connection. But just being connected to a Wi-Fi hotspot does not necessarily grant you connection to the internet. It's only if that hotspot itself has an internet connection. So if your laptop, for example, has a 3G or 4G dongle and it provides your laptop with internet connectivity, well then, if you allow another laptop or another mobile device to connect through, through your laptop to the internet, well then you will be given internet connectivity. But again, your data charge will be nil because you are just connecting via Wi-Fi, which is a free protocol connecting you to another wireless device. The person who owns this laptop, for example, and has 
the dongle and is paying the internet service provider a monthly fee, they will be the people who will be paying for the data. So what is the difference between the 3G, the 4G and the 5G? What does that all mean? That's just the rate at which the data can be transmitted and received. So as you can see here, 5G being the fastest while 3G and earlier protocol being much slower. And then I also told you there's something called HSDPA. It's just an advanced form of 3G. So depending where you are, maybe you're in a rural area and there aren't 4G or LTE or 5G towers, there's only 3G plus or hsdpa well that just means that you're you're going to have a slower throughput of your data remember the 3g 4g and 5g refer to your cellular connectivity so going back to this diagram the 3g the 4g the 5g that's referring to that part over there your own contract with your cellular service provider in terms of that over there the Wi-Fi, well, you may be connecting over 5 gigahertz, but that does not mean you have 5G signal to your internet service provider. And that's where there's another confusion is some Wi-Fi routers advertise 5G, as in they can transmit and receive on these wireless antenna using 5 gigahertz as the frequency. But that just means your wireless link has the ability to transmit at that frequency range, which happens to be the 5G cellular frequency range. It just means they are transmitting over the same frequency range. So you might have a 5 gigahertz connection to this Wi-Fi router, but that's still over Wi-Fi. But your Wi-Fi router may be connecting to a cellular service provider, and that might be a 5G connection. While these have a similar frequency band, the protocol is not the same. This is a Wi-Fi protocol, while this over here connecting to the internet via the router is using a cellular protocol. So if you have one of these type of CPE devices, you might be connecting via Wi-Fi to the device. Maybe your laptops, printers, and mobile phones are connecting via Wi-Fi. And there you can see there's a little LED there for Wi-Fi. This particular device is also a router and that will be connecting to a cell phone tower somewhere. And that's what this 4G and 5G is. The 4G is just telling you that it's only able to connect via a 4G link because for some reason maybe 5G isn't available in your area. 5G is just telling you you're now connecting at the 5G protocol. You're now connecting over 5 gigahertz and therefore your data transmission should be faster. So the 5G LED here and the 4G LED here is to do with the cellular connection while the Wi-Fi is to do with your LAN connection. So this over here is for your WAN and this over here is for your LAN. So remember that the Wi-Fi is internal just for the small little network and the WAN is the wider connection to the internet service providers. All right, thanks for watching and cheers.